Hello, Blaine Gray here from Plastering for Beginners and today we're going to talk about one coat plastering. This is a massive no-go for plasterers and generally anyone who does one coat plastering is a bit of a cowboy. That is a general rule of thumb. Today we're going to test it out, see if it's actually ever okay to do one coat plastering. In my whole 11 years of plastering, I've probably done one coat in twice, and that's because a plasterer demanded I did it that way because it was faster. Never worked out for me then, but today's video we're going to do things slightly differently. I'm going to give it a proper go this time. I'm going to do it using a sponge float method. So let's see if this works out. I'm going to go through everything I did. I'm going to go through the whole process, and at the end, see if the finish actually worked out. Let's do it. Okay, so let's get straight to it. What you're looking at here is a very small wall I'm plastering on and this was to do with a trial mainly because I never actually done this before. I have done it maybe twice in my life, one coat plastering and um, it wasn't very good. <laughs> so that's where this little trial comes in. It's actually for a bathroom and this wall is, um, is going to get tiled. So you just wanted it plastered anyway. So I thought it'd be a good time to test it out. But the main thing if we are going to do one coat plastering, and yet, even you don't even know if I agree with it yet, but what the thing you want to consider is putting bigger, thicker amount on at the beginning, because the last thing you want to do is compromise the thickness of your plaster. This will ultimately make it weaker, the product won't be as strong, so what you've got to do is put a thicker coat on from stage one, because obviously we only get one chance to do this. If we are going to do one coat plastering, We've got to put it thick. So the aim is to at least get it 3 mil thickness. It means you're going to be using a lot more plaster. You're going to be going to your bucket a lot more. But if that means we don't have to apply a second coat, then that is an amazing draw. Because you, how much time would you save yourself? So the only thing I would say about this is when you're applying your plaster, make sure it's nice and thick. Again, try and get it flat. I mean, I'm trying my best to get it. It's a bit harder when it's thicker. Because you've got, a, you've got a lot more to play with. But the idea is the same. Upwards motions. Come back on yourself. Take the lines out behind you. And then just keep doing it the way that we have been doing. Through our channel. And through uh, the videos I've shown you previous to this. So exactly that. Just putting the plaster on nice nice and thick. To allow for that second coat. Um, I mean in theory. If you're putting the same amount of plaster on in one coat. As you would in two. Does that affect the strength? I'm not fully sure, I'm no expert in this, British Gypsum say you need two coats of plaster but if you could get the same coat, if you get the same thickness on in one, then where would the problem be? These are the questions we're going to tackle during this video and uh, hopefully we'll get an answer to whether this is something we can actually start working on. So that's it, apply your first and only coat of plaster and then we've got stage two, we want to flatten it. And what I highly recommend, especially especially if you're doing one coat plastering, is to use a spatula. I've got the Ox Speed Skim here. It doesn't have to be that. I love these products. That's why I'm using them. I'm not endorsed by anyone. But if we are going to be doing one coat, we need to make sure this first coat is dead flat. Because obviously this is the only chance we're going to get. And spatulas seem to be the best way to flatten your wall. And I'm doing it straight off the bat. I've literally applied the plaster, I waited about 10 minutes, but with this speed skim, you can go straight over it. And the plastic blade forces the plaster to set a bit faster, so be aware of that. And we will be talking about that in the uh, future of this video, actually. We'll be talking about the materials to use further on. But at the moment, I'm using a plastic speed skim. Brilliant product. And we're getting this wall flat from stage one. So, so far, we've applied it and flattened it with the speed skim happy days stage three we're going to fill it the problem is now is we have only applied one coat of plaster usually the second coat is where you get you fill in any holes you get any hollows out and you start to really sculpt the wall but we haven't got the chance with this so what i'm doing now is flattening the wall whilst filling any holes that are there so i'm getting the excess plaster as we call it fat filling them holes and making sure we can get the wall not only flat but filled we want you don't want any gaps you don't really want any big holes because as you know you're not going to get another chance to do it if you are doing one coat plastering so you want to make sure that the area is flat smooth 
and filled. So that's it. You've got a bit more pressure at the early stages having one coat plaster. But again, it's nothing. It's not anything we've not done before. You'd be doing the same if you put your second coat on. The um, thing is now we've probably saved ourselves about 25 minutes in this point. Which you know is, is a nice thought. <laughs> so nice long sweeps. The longer the better because you'll get a flatter wall doing it that way. Work from your sides. Make so you, sure your sides are filled in. And uh, what we're doing is just working on top of that flat coat. The, the coat that we flattened with the speed skim. I've done this about 20 minutes after I've used the speed skim actually. Just quickly give it a quick uh, quick fill and flatten. And obviously on this small area it won't take that much time. Um, so the next question is, is it going to be enough? At this moment I'm getting a lot of fat from the plaster and filling it and it's absolutely fine. But what I would recommend if you are to do one coat plastering definitely make sure you've got experience behind you because this is a bit sketchy i definitely recommend you don't jump into this as a beginner you do the traditional way of doing it and i'll give you uh, an opportunity in the end of this video to uh, learn the traditional way of plastering if you are new um stage four the only way i recommend doing one coat plastering is with a sponge float i've done it without it no good promise never did it again it's rubbish so what you do is you put a light haze of water on your plaster. I've just got a nice little spray there. It's only like a fiver, I think, cheapest chips. And um, just give a light haze of water on your wall. And then using your sponge float, what you do is you flatten. Again, we're getting rid of any lumps, any ripples. And the sponge float really helps flatten your wall. And as if you have been watching me and uh, been in touch with the channel, you probably realize that recently I've been a bit of a pro believer in the sponge float for plastering and all we're doing is literally light haze of water and we're just putting your float flat to the wall figure of eight motions if you want long sweep so what we're doing is just rubbing the wall up with the sponge float what this does like I said before it removes any high spots and it fills any low spots it's it's like as if you're floating with render except a slightly less abrasive Okay, so I'm basically about to flatten the sponged wall here, but I just want to say one quick tip. I'm going to use a speed skim. I wouldn't recommend use the plastic speed skim. That's the one I used at the beginning of the video. What will happen is the plastic forces the plaster to set a lot faster than what it would if you use steel contact. This generally means that the texture might set. So I'd really recommend if, if you don't have a steel um, spatula, that's fine. Just use a normal trowel. But don't use your plastic speed skim because it really will make a mess of things. Right, let's carry on with the video. Let's see how it goes. This is the texture you'll get. Um, usually I'd wait about five minutes before flattening it. But here's my secret weapon, something new. Um, and it's the speed skim SF. This is a steel blade. And I've only just started reusing this. I've had this in the van, back of the van for about six months. I didn't touch it because I was... So in love with the plastic blade, but this came out and I just tried it on a whim on this wall for, you know, for this sponge floating and God, it did the job, mate. It really flattened it. It got rid of everything, all the streaks, all the ripples. But what I would say is when you are using this, make sure that there's no texture left on the sponge. If you, if that texture, texture dries, it'll dry for a long time and you won't get rid of it. The thing is with sponge float plastering, you've got to make sure that all that texture on your wall is gone. So there's no sponge marks, there's nothing left. Lots of light, that's why I've got the light shining in from the door now. You want lots of light when using a sponge float because you need to make sure that that grain and that texture is completely gone. Because if it dries, you won't get it out. You'll have to get it out at the end when it's dried up and you'll have to use some filler. But yeah, the Speed Skim Steel Blade is an absolute godsend and... I, uh, I, like I said, it's been in the van for about six months. I didn't touch it, but for this, it was absolutely perfect. So not only are we um, getting the wall flat again with a spatula, but we're getting rid of all the textured marks in a lot faster pace. So stage six. Now we're going to start to trowel the wall up. And this is probably where we'll notice if anything's gone wrong. Because um, at this point, it'd be too late. So I'm just using the... The Ox Ultra Effect Plex here. I'm in the trial uh, period at the moment, giving it a go. So far, so good. Um, but I'll come back to that into the future. And all we're doing, we make sure them, we're getting them corners nice and sharp. Using the trowel to neatly tuck in there. Use a bit of water at this stage, but because we've used 
the uh, the sponge flow obviously it's had a lot of water exposed to the plaster anyway so we don't really need to put that much more in so what we're doing now we're just starting to get the wall smooth it's been flattened it's been floated it's been flattened filled and the full business been done now what we're trying to do is get that smooth finish and what we're working on is keeping your trowel nice and the further we get to a stage the more open your trowel becomes because that's what happens when you start to smooth it up and what we're doing is just using a bit of water and we're just starting to get that wall nice smooth and flatten it even more than what we have done before obviously if you've got a bumpy wall then you failed as a plasterer so we need to make sure we get our walls nice and flat but by this point hopefully all the work's been done with the use of the spatulas that we've got on the go there so yeah that's that again long sweeps we've got a bit of fat left over this is about 20 minutes after I've, um, I've used the speed skim. So again, it's another 20 minutes. And that's generally the case as it goes on. Give it an extra 20, 25 minutes before you move on to the next step and you should be fine. But what, like I said before, we're not using a lot of water at this point. We're just using minimal amounts because there was a lot used previously. Which literally troweling up, getting the wall nice and flat. And that's it. Not really much else to say there so that's that that's stage seven stage seven is coming up now and now we're going to be working on the wet trowel we're again another 20 minutes after the wall should be feeling pretty solid at this point what i'm going to do using your water brush or you can use your sprayer if you want i prefer the the uh the touch of the water brush to be fair i prefer the finish it leaves literally cross trowel on your wall this is where we we actually work against the way we've been flattening in previously. So with a bit with your water brush, as you can see, we're troweling horizontally across the wall. And this will further flatten the plaster and it really helps to um, give you an ultimate all round flatter finish by doing this. The water will help take uh, lubricate the plaster further. But really we are flattening but towards this this stage of plastering we, we're ultimately getting nice and smooth now it's too late to fill in any holes because you won't be collecting much fat now if you are it's too early all we're doing now is making sure our wall is getting nice and smooth so again a simple process using water brush brush it along and then use your trowel to brush it out final final stage stage eight is a dry trowel i've got a rafina plaza flex there that is an amazing trowel especially for finishing and again, we're just using the cross trowel. Just this is literally now just giving it a matte matte texture. You know, you don't really want to shine it up too much. The plastic of the trowel doesn't bring the water to the surface of the plaster, which means you get a smooth but matte finish, which the painters will be appreciative of. So this is the final stage, and as you can see, it's not looking too bad. There's no major holes, and I must admit whilst i'm here talking to you i was very surprised at the results i got like i said i have tried once coat plastering before it wasn't good but this was a totally different story and the results i was very surprised with okay so that was that and i must say i was very surprised by the verdict it actually went a lot better than what i thought the finish was cool i checked the wall later on it was very very flat the thickness was obviously there because we've applied a thicker coat at the beginning so i must say i'm very surprised this one coat plastering obviously saved a hell of a lot of time even more effort and the finish was good so the big question is you know is it a bad thing to do i don't know i can't say for you but what i can say is that the finish was bang on thanks to the sponge floating and until I check in a few years, I've got no way of knowing how strong this plaster will be. But so far, so good. So now I want you to leave a comment. Do you agree with it? Have you ever done one coat plastering yourself? Is it something you're doing now? Is it How are you doing it? Is it working out? Or are you old school where you think two coat is the best way to do it? This is obviously going to cause a bit of a frenzy here. So please leave your comments below because I want to hear from you. Because I am literally on the fence at the moment. Because if I can save myself more time and effort doing this, then why wouldn't you? Obviously, all the companies saying you shouldn't, and everyone else, I'm going to get a lot of stick from plasterers. But let me know what you think, because I was very, very surprised by this. The finish was grand, like I said. 
And yeah, I must admit, it was a very, a very surprising result. But if you're new to the game, you're new to plastering, don't do this. And what I do recommend is you do it properly first. Do it properly, learn plastering if the real way of doing it, the, the prescribed way. And the way I recommend you do that is join our welcome course from Plastering Beginners. We'll teach you the full process to plastering, show how to mix it, which tools to use. We'll show you the whole process and it's completely free. So sign up using the link below. There should be a thing around here as well. Sign up to that if you really want to learn the full process to plastering. But again, don't try this one coat plastering if you do because I don't recommend it. Do it the real way, do it the proper way. But if you are experienced, give it a go and let us know what you think. Right, that's Blaine Gray Plastic Beginners. If you like this video, please like. And if you liked it that much, please subscribe. And we'll be doing more crazy test lights in the future. So, nice one. Speak soon. Cheers.